In this video, we'll talk about metabotropic receptors. Metabotropic receptors are type of receptors which, upon binding to ligand, lead to the production of certain metabolites. That is why they are known as metabotropic receptors. Generally, metabotropic receptors are G protein coupled receptors. And when it is activated, it can lead to activation of several other intracellular components and second messengers that might trigger other intracellular events. In this video, we will try to understand the mode of action of metabotropic receptors and where we can find them. One common place where we can find the metabotropic receptor is our nervous system. In the nervous system, there are two types of receptors which are found. One is ionotropic receptors, another is metabotropic receptors. And in this video, we'll focus on the metabotropic receptors and its mode of action. Before starting, we should understand that ionotropic receptors are important for fast response, whereas metabotropic receptors are generally slow in terms of responsivity. We would understand why that is important in a moment. So let's try to understand what are the ligands for metabotropic receptors. Metabotropic receptors could have a large variety of ligands. That is like small molecules, transmitters, monoamines, peptides, hormones, and even gaseous molecule. We can try to understand the mechanism of action by taking some live examples. We can see metabotropic receptors in our nose, in our olfactory system. All the olfactory receptors are actually metabotropic receptors and they are responsive to specific gaseous molecule and that helps us in terms of smell. So olfactory receptors are metabotropic receptors. So here we are seeing a portion of the olfactory epithelia. Here you can see there are ligands, maybe a gaseous ligand which can bind to olfactory receptor marked here in green. This ligand binding triggers a G protein coupled re receptor uh, response. So the alpha subunit of G protein gets dissociated and it activates adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase in turn generate cyclic AMP from ATP and this, this cyclic AMP leads to activation of cyclic nucleotide gated channels which leads to influx of cations inside these cells. This actually depolarizes the cell and sends the signal to the brain. Now also we can see these kind of receptors in other cases. So for example, in glutamatergic system, we can definitely see inotropic glutamate receptors, but also we can see metabotropic glutamate receptors present in the post synapse. And it helps in the nerve conduction. So metabotropic glutamate receptors are G protein coupled receptors and they help in ionic influx but in an indirect fashion. They are not directly linked to the ion channel or they are not ion channel itself. So the way they can help us, they can help trigger the response is the following. We take an example of hippocampal neurons where we can find m 5 which is one kind of metabotropic glutamate receptors. Upon glutamate binding, it can activate specific G protein that ultimately activates several other mediators such as HOMAR and that triggers NMDA receptor activation. NMDA receptor triggers ion flow inside the neuron and that is how this response is taken care of. And this is important for synaptic plasticity in hippocampal circuits. Now muscarinic acetylcholine receptors are other examples of metabotropic receptors. These are found in the cholinergic system. And muscarinic acetylcholine receptors are present throughout the central nervous system in the postsynapse. Also outside the nervous system in neuromuscular junction and in peripheral nervous system, we can see muscarinic acetylcholine receptors. So muscarinic, mus muscarinic acetylcholine receptors upon acetylcholine binding triggers a GQ mediated response which can further activate phospholipase C, thereby activating second messengers like IP3 and DAG, which has their own downstream effects. Alternatively, the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor can trigger GI or GO type of uh, receptors or G proteins. So the GI protein inhibits the adenylate cycles and that leads to D 
depletion of AT, uh, cyclic AMP level. That means the ATP cannot be generated to cyclic AMP. This decrease in cyclic AMP level is also important and it actually regulates the activity of nucleotide gated ion channels and thereby it modulates neuronal activity. We can also find another example in the GABA system. So the GABA B type receptor is actually an example of metamotropic receptor. And it works via GI type of uh, G protein. So GABA binds to the GABA receptor B. That triggers the G protein to dissociate into the beta gamma segment and the G alpha segment. This beta gamma segment actually activates GERC channel, which is a potassium channel. And it leads to the outflux of potassium, thereby decreasing the neuronal activity or it has, it's having a prolonged inhibitory action. Also, the alpha subunit can actually inhibit the adenylate cyclase, thereby decreasing the cyclic AMP level. This in turn kind of uh, inhibit the calcium influx via several calcium channels. It has other models. So, cyclic AMP dependent modulators of voltage gated channels can be modulated using this kind of signaling system and thereby calcium influx is decreased. So, moral of the story. Greater number of positive ions are moving out of the cell and lesser number of ions are coming inside of the cell. This leads to an inhibitory effect of the GABA B type receptor. So, in this video, we discussed quite a lot of examples of metamotropic receptors, how they work. Each of these cases, we have seen that they work in a different fashion. But there is a commonality between all of these actions. All of these uh, receptors use kind of intracellular responders, second messengers to uh, orchestrate their function. And that is the essence of metabotropic receptors. You can go get many notes and flashcards in my Facebook page and Instagram. You can follow us using this kind of this uh, handle, Animated Biology with Harper. All the link is provided in the description. Don't forget to check it out. You can support our channel via super like option, which is present in the right side corner of the video. By clicking on that, you can support our channel. Your small support means a lot for us. Alternatively, you can use Patreon or you can use this uh, QR code for support for supporting our channel. If you wish to connect, all the social media handles are provided in the description. Feel free. Also, subscribe the Nerd Medic channel where you can get exclusive medical contents. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Don't forget to let us know in the comment how you like our videos. If you have a suggestion for